all backcountry travelers, anybody, no matter what people are doing, they each shoulder the responsibility for their own risk. The pressure as a forecaster is, is if I give them the wrong information. If I don't address the right avalanche problem and they go out expecting one thing, and then in reality, there's a different problem. Or you say the avalanche danger is gonna be one rating and it ends up being more hazardous than that. Now, in the avalanche education world, you start with the avalanche forecast, but then you make your own observations after that to look for what the forecast is talking about. But if you see something that doesn't line up and indicates more danger, you take the responsibility on yourself to, to, to change your plan. My name is Irene Henninger. And I'm Lee Lazara. And we're both avalanche forecasters with the Northwest Avalanche Center, and we forecast for the West North and West Central zones. I ski patrolled between Montana and New Zealand for 23 winters. And so while I was doing that, I was also teaching avalanche courses. But then I looked around for some forecasting jobs, and I ended up taking the job at the Northwest Avalanche Center. So the path to me becoming an avalanche forecaster was just by being a skier by being someone who loved skiing, loved being in the mountains, and was particularly attracted to being in avalanche terrain as a backcountry skier. I lived in Little Cottonwood Canyon, and I ended up staying there long enough that I uh, landed on the Snowbird Ski Patrol. I worked as a guide for a handful of years, as a ski guide, a mountain guide in the Northwest, and I started working with the Northwest Avalanche Center as a pro observer, and did that for five years this job as a forecaster came up in the last year and I applied and happy to be part of the organization since 2015. NWAC is a public-private partnership. The U.S. Forest Service provides avalanche and weather forecasting and the nonprofit NWAC provides outreach, education, and fundraising. Our goal at NWAC is to consistently provide an avalanche forecast that's expert, professional, and clear that is something reliable for people to use so they can understand each day how much danger they can encounter from avalanches when they're in the mountains, but also where they can go to, to do what they're out there to do to begin with. What's really important to me is that I don't want to make this all sound negative, just like don't go here, don't go here, don't go here sort of thing. I mean, really, a lot of the times that 25 degree powder slope would be nice to get on. Or if you're a snowshoer, uh, maybe just rerouting your plan to travel on a different trail. My day as an avalanche forecaster actually begins the evening before. It's finding partners, talking with my partners, figuring out where we're gonna go, why we're gonna go there, why is it a good idea, or why shouldn't we go to this place and go maybe go someplace else. Um, looking at the forecast that comes out at 6 p.m., looking at weather forecasts in addition to the avalanche forecast. The morning that I wanna get out, I check the avalanche forecast again. I also look at the weather again, and I also maybe see if there's any updated observations which might change my plans based on whether somebody potentially headed out and encountered conditions which might be different from what I expect to see out there. When our day in the field finishes, in a way that's when the work day really begins. That's where we go from the being out in the mountains and looking at snow and getting a little skiing and getting some exercise to sitting down behind the computer with a lot of raw information and trying to take that information and then put that together with a weather forecast to actually produce the avalanche forecast for the next day. Forecaster meeting ends hopefully at 3.30 and that's basically go time. We have two hours and a little bit more to take the ideas that we're able to, to consolidate during the meeting and actually put those ideas and the danger rating and the problems into the thing that people read when they look at the avalanche forecast. With red flags more than any of these other basic information pieces that you gather from the avalanche forecast, just looking over avalanche incidents, so many of the times when people are caught in avalanches, it's because they ignored an obvious red flag. The main red flags are recent avalanches, recent snowfall or wind loading, cracking or woomphing, and rapid warming. With everyone becoming more aware of that and 
really trying to pay attention to whether a red flag occurred and immediately reevaluate what I'm doing and where I should be traveling, that's one of the most important things that I could be doing in order to avoid getting involved in an avalanche. I didn't realize until I started working as an avalanche forecaster the level to which creating an avalanche forecast is a, is a community effort. So myself or Irene or the other forecasters and observers at NWAC, even if we went into the mountains every day and were able to see terrain and go to all these places, we would never be able to gather all the information that we needed to create the product we do. It is dependent on other people providing us information and then we're going out just to like get our own understanding of, of what they're able to provide us. For starters, submitting observations is something that is so incredibly helpful to us. Becoming a member um, and then also taking avalanche courses as well is something that's incredibly valuable for yourself and to help become a more helpful member of the community. when it's raining and it's windy and the skiing is horrible, we still go into the mountains. That's our job, to go out there when no one else is out there. So we go skiing so you don't have to. Those really terrible days, I have to pay just as much attention to those as I do to the days that are awesome when people are skiing pal and there's a lot of people out there. My goal as an avalanche forecaster is to be able to provide you with as much information as I can so that you can have a fun day in the backcountry and get home safely at the end of the day.